we're having one really history 101. Take a deep breath, there is no written or oral text. But we have two noted experts in Wimberley history. We have um, Bill, who has lived in Wimberley 75 years. Bill, Emelf, his wonderful wife, has lived here only 68 years. <laughs> Bill is a veteran of World War II and was injured in the Battle of Iwo, Iwo Jima. He was highly decorated in the war. He has served on the school board here in Wimberley. He has been president of the Chamber of Commerce and has been an integral part in the development of this community. And our committee wanted everybody to know everything there is great about Wimberley. And Bill and ML were witnesses to these great things. Uh, about when was the uh, market day trade day started? Uh, as I recall, it was in the late 60s. And who said that? Uh, somebody. <laughs> uh, would you read the first paragraph on this paper? I will. Although the date on which Wimberley will have its first trades day has not been set, the young man, men here are determined not to be caught with a dirty town when that eventful time comes. And let's see, that's dated uh, Wimberley, Texas, November the 15th, 1909. <laughs> I would like to give this paper to the president. Uh, Russell Cox kind of put it together for our scraps that I had. But it, in its ads, and you'll see I've highlighted some of them, uh, I was asked, what would we really like? Why don't people come? And I'll continue <laughs> from up here. The, uh, the newspaper, am I talking to a beautiful <laughs> Uh, the newspaper had a lot of advertisements about come to Wimbledon for the mountain air, for the invigorating climate. Well, uh, a lot of us don't think of the difference between San Marcos and Wimbledon. They're, what, a couple hundred feet? But the Wimbledon people advertised in this paper that they sold in San Marcos come to the mountains. <laughs> well, I want to tell you that my, uh, I was raised in, uh, in the Depression in Houston and Georgia, and Dad was looking for a job everywhere. Uh, but we stayed with grandparents in San Marcos, and he, starting in 1890s, brought his family to camp out at what is now Rio Nito. And uh, he did that every year because of the mountain air. <laughs> there, was, there was less asthma. You felt better. You didn't have colds. Well, uh, I don't know if you're present to do with the paper, but try a bit to read it. Uh, but I. Uh, <laughs> I was a brave person in 1947 and asked a Highland Park city girl who barely knew where Texas was if she wanted to come to Wembley. Why did you say yes? Tell us how you got here. Because he turned it down twice. <laughs> okay, I did ask him to marry him. I think that if you're a girl and you've been asked to be married, and when you find somebody you like to marry, you might as well go ahead and ask them. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're with me. All right. Now, what do I need to do? Oh, Jesus, let me say something quickly, and then I have to be quiet because he's gotten to a point where I talk too much. <laughs> the bottom line is you lions are responsible for the room you're sitting in, probably the whole building, because when we started, I can't believe it. it seems to me we've been building this stuff forever. 
My fir the, the first starting was the Lions Club saying, we will give you some money for this community center. And they did. They had provisos. And uh, we were a little taken aback by them. But by George, they were the first ones to stay up and stand up and say, we will. We believe in this project. And you've got $60,000 of our money when you get it to the point where we can give it to you. Thank you very, very much. Is there anybody here who was a lion when that money was voted to come to the community center? Come away. Oh, there. right. All right. How delightful to see you. But anyway, I want to say one thing more. They were also helpful. I said, how many members do you have? Because this hall will be the meeting place. They said, we well, better arrange to have 250 members, 300 auditorium style. 250 seated, and that is exactly what we did. So thank you, fellas and girls, now, and uh, we really appreciate you, particularly when first we had to get the dirt. That was the first battle cry, first the dirt, and then to build this. So I'm from <laughs> She responds. Uh, Ripley long ago was a dangerous place to live. Uh, the San Marcos people came from uh, Alabama and Georgia and had farms and slaves and uh, they were more civilized, more educated. But if you were a squirrel hunter from Arkansas or Tennessee, uh, you tended to come to the mountains, not to the mountain air, but we tended to come where land was a little cheaper. And you could buy more land here because it was uh, also claimed by Indians. So you had a little fight going on, but the people that came here liked to fight. My grandfather uh, talked about uh, in 1900 when a group from Wormley would come to San Marcos on Saturday. That's when business was done. And Texas at that time. Uh, the Wembley group would be walking down the sidewalk and San Marcos people would go across the road to walk. They didn't want to have a confrontation. Well, I had one uh, great-grandfather that had a confrontation. He lost his life, his wife, scalp, and grandson, and so on. But the idea was uh, when that happened, your neighbors got together, got on the horses, went out after the Indians and killed the Indians and brought the horses home. When our country was born, it was bombed in Pearl Harbor, December 7th. Our country got together. I say together, I mean that. Every other war since then has been where we send the military. Uh, we send the second, but the people have not fought with a group. And a group strength is insurmountable. And it doesn't matter whether it's two in a family, or a bigger family, or a church, or a club, you all need to stick together, whatever it is. Well, with 9-11, we saw a little bit of sticking together for a short time, but that was uh, entirely too short. But with the flood of May the 24th, it was wonderful what people did for their neighbors and what they have continued to do. We have uh, fought together. Now, we all differ. We uh, listen to the news and we hear that uh, a lion was shot in Africa by a white man from a dentist. And we also saw that two reporters were shot, but by a gun. And so we get, we have two different philosophies going in this country. But both ideas are right, or could be right. We differ with half of them. 
But that's all right, too. We can still work together as a unit. And with this young lady in 1940, before marriage, she was listening to my father that uh, was talking about where we were going to meet. We kept having meetings at the schoolhouse. You know, I have a hard time staying on track. You all know that the school used to be where the lumberyard used to be, where the lumberyard shopping center is. Well, about 18 something or other, these little, uh, we had little village schools. Every time three or four houses get close together, they'd have six or eight or ten children and they'd hire some visiting uh, eligible young maiden to come be teacher. And we had uh, 15 or 20 schools, which eventually combined about 1900, and we had a big old wooden building. And after that, we had the Aves uh, Corral Theater that came there. That was a quite a show place. And then we had a lumber yard. And, uh, Joe Clyde from San Marcos had it, and the Seabrook friend. Uh, we didn't have a lock on the door, Joe didn't. And so when people needed a number, they got it, and they came by the next day and paid. And there was so little work going on that it was obvious <laughs> who used the lumber. The scrap lumber was thrown behind the building. Well, my mother, and father had been uh, traveling the country. They had a radio program uh, started before the war and uh, kept mother busy. She was part of the team. And she made a date with uh, Charlie Oldham to be here on a Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock. She wanted to add a bathroom on the house that we had. Uh, regular plumbing and everything. We had gotten a light bulb, but we wanted a bathroom. And you know, Charlie had been friends since they were born in the 1800s. And he didn't show up. But my mother had this red-headed uh, city attitude of, let's go get things done. Let's do it my way. Too. And, uh, so when he did come the next day, I said, Charlie, where were you? He said, well, Miss Louise, I had something more important to do. And she said, well, you had a date with me. What was it? Well, he said, old man Smith died. And somebody had to build him a coffin. The wood back in the lumber yard was put there for people to build in emergency. And then he said, after that, somebody had to dig a grave for him. And then I got ready to bury him, and there was nobody to run the service, so I had to do that. Now, what was your problem? <laughs> well, I want to tell you, my mother, uh, to my estimate, uh, how do you know about another generation, but that changed her whole philosophy of what can I do for you first, and then, then go into your own needs? Well, Charlie remained a friend for life. He was one of our great fishermen. And uh, when, when I met this pretty lady at the University of Texas, the great matrimonial bureau, they're not good at football, so they must be good at shot. Uh, <laughs> Well, she was an actress and a model and a writer and a equestrian and a flyer, and she could do everything. And I thought, well, I am out of my league here. She had a movie contract, but she said, no, I was not in Texas. And uh, so uh, I dated her, but I didn't think there was a chance of a fit there. But we both were misfits in our communities. We both were a little bit independent. 
and like to uh, do things our way. And together we've been doing them our duplicate way. And we lean on each other, and it is a pleasure. But what did you do to get known when you came to Wimberley not knowing? You didn't know one soul here, did you? Oh, there were only uh, two other married couples our age. And I didn't know how to do anything that anybody in Wimberley, Texas did well. They could castrate a bull at lunch and play with the grandchildren on the dining table by supper. I didn't quite understand that since I couldn't do anything. I stayed put on Sabino Ranch and uh, threw the children out. Get that in children for some reason. A puppy or a kitten would have been nice. But nevertheless, I just tell only children don't know how to be around anybody, let alone young people. So I would put, they put them outdoors with some of his critters that he brought home from the farms to try to save. We'd pat pigs back into shape that had been underneath their mamas too long. And we had a, a couple of burros, and uh, all those creatures were outside. When the children were little, there they would be as well. Uh, one of our sons only napped with a pig lit because that's what he was used to. So anyway, uh, it was interesting to me because I hadn't done any of this before and I wasn't good at anything. I had a complex. So I just want to tell you that in Wimberley, Texas, when we went to a little store that barely had anything, I mean, we never did have a really, really good store, but we had food that we could go buy. And I wasn't going to Dripping Spring, I mean, to uh, San Marcos at that time. But here in town, one day, I was down on the third shelf trying to get the tomatoes, and a little problem I had called pregnancy would not let me up. And a hand came down, oh, I, I was down there and I looked over to the side and there were a beautiful pair of homemade, of handmade boots. And um, they were gorgeous, they're just stunning. And I called one of the children who couldn't have cared less and said, I want you to see these boots. These are really good looking and they're handmade. Well, the child said, mm -hmm, and departed. And a hand came down, and I took it, and he helped me up. I needed to get a help at that time. And it was Governor Schiffers. So I want to tell you that Wimberley from day one, at least from 47 on, had fascinating people. Wimberley has been born and reborn. The Wimberley I knew with 500 people early on, and I was so much away from town, I could do nothing, and I felt very inadequate. And I was inadequate. Finally, got to be the Wimberley in the 50s. People came in from Houston, they built their houses, they landscaped the yard, and then the men said, now what? By golly. They came in, they sat around, and they listened to the people drinking coffee in the morning after standing at the post office for a while. And my point is this, they, they listened to see what it was that they knew what to do with, how it might help. Therefore, we began to have some a real nice, neat Wimberley. When they picked up trash before people came to town, a great way to visit with a friend is to pick up trash. And then, of course, the next time, if you drop a dollar here and there, you'll have more people come. They're younger, of course, but nevertheless, there are ways. The main thing I loved about this was, by the time we had to leave, because there was no food, and most children insisted on eating three times a day. By the way, that's a mistake if anybody's younger and haven't made it. But the point is, you don't have to feed them three times a day. They'll get used to one time a day. <laughs> I didn't figure that out, however, until it's time to leave. Okay, I'm about to quit this, but I want to tell you that Wembley has been special in different ways. The independence and the ability of the people who were here they didn't need anything. They seldom had any money in the early, early days that Bill and his grandfather and others were coming up here to visit. The bottom line is, that was a good one really, too. Um, I hope there's nobody in this room or related to the person I'm about to tell the story on. Oh my, this is gonna be terrible. Anyway, I was shocked one day to hear a local businessman, there were only two businesses at the time, refer to his wife as the old blister. 
and coming from Dallas, from Houston, from Tulsa, from Detroit, from Indiana, we didn't do that sort of thing there. And it was really exciting. I loved it being here. I, I want to tell you that the only reason I asked Bill if, I could, if he would like to marry me is because I didn't want to get married. And in those days, that's all you could do. Still, of course, I'm sure. You could have been a teacher. No, I couldn't have been a teacher. A nurse? I don't know anything about nurses, blood. I used to cry and say, Bill, well, the children fell down. He's bleeding all over the place. And um, he would come around from wherever he was. All right, I'm through talking, except I want to tell you, the 50s, the people that came in, how many were here in the 50s? Retired. Hello? Let me talk about All right, let me just say this. this I want to tell you that now we have new people coming in. We don't care what you did in Houston or New York or Dallas or even Ohio. We don't care if we, if we care to be there. No, we are in Wimberley. Volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. Please. And right here up. is a volunteer. Uh, <laughs> I was going to talk a little about uh, some of the heroes of Wimberley. But in 1940, uh, some odd, and 50, there was a Mrs. Mitchell who was 96. And I think Mrs. Mitchell stayed 96 for about 20 or 30 years <laughs> while her daughter, Edna, took care of her. Now, this picture was in 1984. Edna Mitchell was well up in years. But she had been a caretaker and a diligent one and took her mother places. She was a good citizen. But when her mother died, she said, I want to join the Wembley Chorus. And the next thing we knew, they had a five-foot birthday cake uh, made out of wood with uh, orange over the top or whatever. And they had a birthday party for Leroy Nino, the first actor, singer we really had here. And out of the birthday cake popped Edna Mitchell in a leotard. She was this big. And she joined the movies. She joined the players and so on. Now we have talked uh, plenty long, but there's a lot of history in Wembley, and keep digging, and you'll find it, and you'll find good people of all sorts. And we do thank you for the cooperation. Questions? Uh, <laughs> On behalf of all of our lions and future lions, as a small token of our appreciation, I'd like to give you this certificate of appreciation that says presented to MF and Bill Johnson with grateful appreciation for sharing your knowledge of Wimberley's history with our club. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.